In the previous movie, we skinned our Dota 2 courier and set up a facial control rig. In this movie, we'll configure the human IK control rig and start blocking out the spawn animation. Open the file dota 2 courier part 3 startmlt from the provided files linked below, or use your own scene. Before we get started, we need to set some animation preferences. Under Settings, Working Units, set time to NTSC 30fps, which is a standard frame rate for games. Next, under Animation, turn on Auto Key. The Rotation Interpolation section refers to the way Maya LT interprets the rotation data between each key, visualized as animation curves in the graph editor. This will come into play in the next movie when we start adjusting our animation curves. For now, leave these options as is. In the Tangent section, set Default In Tangent to Flat and Default Out Tangent to Stepped. This removes the smooth interpolation between keys, leaving only the individually keyed poses of our blocked animation. Under Time Slider, Time Slider, set key tick size to 3 pixels to increase the thickness of the keys in the time slider. In the Playback section, set looping to continuous and playback speed to real time 30 FPS. Click Save. Open the Human IK character controls to access the control rig we had created in the previous movie. This rig is composed of a hierarchy of IK and FK effectors, which are parented under a root node known here as reference. The IK effectors, shown in red and blue in the workspace, are named according to the rig's points of articulation, such as the shoulders, elbows, knees, and ankles. The FK effectors, shown in yellow, are named to match the skeleton's joints. All the effectors use a common prefix based on your character's name, followed by CTRL. Let's change our rig's appearance to make it easier to see. Select all the IK effectors. In the channel box, set look to sphere and increase radius to 3. Notice that these effectors still hold the test animations we had created in the previous movie to help us preview the courier's skin weights. Highlight the keyed channels, then right-click and select Break Connections to delete their corresponding animation nodes. Now select the FK effectors hierarchy. Change their look and radius attributes to Box and 2 respectively. Then remove their animations by breaking their connections. Note that the Courier Control Hips FK effector has both Translate and Rotate channels, so break all its connections. As we mentioned in part 1 of this series, the Human IK control rig comes with predefined local rotation axes. Select both arm effectors and rotate them together. Notice how the rotation is mirrored. Next, try rotating both leg effectors. Make sure you turn on Release All Pinning beforehand to unlock the feet effectors' position and rotation so they follow the legs. By contrast, the legs' rotations are not mirrored like the arms. While this doesn't impact the rig's overall functionality, it can make it harder to properly mirror poses between opposite limbs. We can address this by adjusting the right-sided effectors' local rotation axes to mirror the left-sided ones, similar to our underlying skeleton. Let's deal with the FK effectors first, so hide the IK effectors. Select the right up leg FK effector. In the attribute editor, its local rotation axis is set via the joint orient attribute, displayed here as a rotation vector. Unlock the attribute, then flip its X and Z values by 180 degrees, which results in a rotation of 90, 0, 90. Next, we need to adjust the Rotate Axis attribute, which sets the effector's rotation offset relative to its Joint Orient attribute. Unlock it and flip its X value by 180 degrees to negative 90. Now rotate both legs again to validate the mirrored local rotation axes. Repeat this for the remaining right-sided FK and IK effectors.
As we've seen in part one, you can also make these adjustments directly in the workspace, especially for effectors with local rotation axis values that fall outside of 90 degree increments. We've included a completed control rig in the provided scene files linked with this movie. Now that our control rig is ready, let's move on to animation. According to the Dota Workshop technical guidelines, our ground and flying couriers require several animations. A spawn, an idle, a run, and a death animation. For the scope of this tutorial, we'll focus on the spawn animation. We've broken down this animation into several key poses via a reference image file these poses serve as a starting point in describing the courier's general motion and flow. Let's map this storyboard to the perspective camera. Go to the Persp Shape tab, and in the Environment section, click the Create button next to Image Plane. Load the provided storyboard image. Now, in the Placement section, set Offset Y to 0.25 and Depth to 1000, which places the image above and behind the courier. We'll pose the courier on consecutive frames in the time slider, which mimics how traditional animators flip through stacked cell drawings. This lets us focus on proper posing before adjusting their timing. In the first pose, the courier is upside down, tucked into a ball, with his propeller retracted. Start by moving the courier into position using the hips IK effector. And then use the other limb effectors to complete the pose. Since we're currently in full body mode, the Human IK Full Body IK Solver evaluates all effectors on your rig. This means that one effector can affect the rest of the body, similar to a ragdoll. Conversely, Body Part Mode isolates each limb's IK Solver like a traditional rig. Switching between these two modes can help speed up the posing process. At this stage, you shouldn't worry about getting every little detail of the pose right. Blocking poses often takes several iterations. To pose the courier's faceplate and propeller, key their respective controls on the facial rig in Face GUI layer. Continue posing the courier to roughly match the next two reference images on subsequent frames. Another way to speed up the blocking process is by mirroring your poses. In body part mode, select an arm effector and copy its keyframe. Then, select the opposite effector and paste the key. Note that this method works primarily with FK effectors because they're in local space, and with IK effectors with blend values set to zero so that they work exactly like FK effectors. We'll take a look at how to blend IK values in the next movie. Conversely, since IK effectors use world space positions, copy-pasting a key for them will not lead to mirrored results. In the fourth pose, the courier crouches down upon landing to absorb the force of the impact. Instead of using the previous pose as a starting point, click the Stance Pose button to revert the control rig to its start pose. Notice that you can't make the courier crouch by lowering its hips IK effector. This is because the ankle effector pins, which lock them down in translation and rotation, are currently disabled. Turn off Release All Pinning to reactivate them. Note that pinning is different from IK blend constraints. Pins only lock effectors during interaction in the workspace and can't be animated. To better pose the ankle and foot effectors, 
use HumanIK's floor contact detection. In the Attribute Editor, go to the HIK Properties tab. In the Floor Contact Feet section, turn on Foot Floor Contact. Now, the courier's feet can slide across the virtual ground plane without ever clipping through. You can also rotate the ankle effector to lift the heel off the ground while maintaining ground contact with the ball and toe effectors. At this point, we've blocked the first four poses of our spawn animation. Continue blocking the rest using the same techniques you've learned so far. Make sure you tumble around your character to inspect it from all angles, as game characters are often seen from different camera views. Use the comma and period keys to cycle through your keyed frames, similar to how you would flip through cell drawings. One way to make a motion look believable is to have it follow arcs. However, this is not always easy to analyze as you cycle through your blocked poses. To help visualize an effector's motion in time, create a motion trail. Select the hips, wrist, and ankle effectors, then go to Animate Create Editable Motion Trail Options. In the Motion Trail Options window, set pinning to Draw when selected to avoid cluttering our workspace. Then enable Show Frame Numbers. Click Apply. MyLT creates a path depicting each effector's position in time. You can also adjust this path to alter the effector's trajectory even while viewing in a different frame. Once we're satisfied with the blocked poses, we can proceed with setting their timing. Note that the more frames you place between two keyed poses, the slower the resulting motion, so your timing may vary from pose to pose. For example, the courier's initial launch motion takes more time compared to its landing sequence. To spread each keyed pose along the time slider, shift-click the key. This highlights it in red. Now drag the key on the time slider. Make sure you're in full body mode so that the keys from all effectors are displayed in the time slider. Once you have the basic timing down, right click on the time slider and select Play Blast to create an animated preview of your result. In the next movie, we'll further polish this spawn animation and export a courier to Dota 2.